No more telephone records for the NSA. Google makes privacy and security easier. Holla VPN ain't secure. And a TSA red team stomps TSA security. All that and more coming up now on ThreatWire. Happy Monday, people. I'm Patrick Norton, and this is ThreatWire for June 1st, 2015. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. I'd like to start with a huge thanks to everyone watching, especially the folks that are supporting us at patreon.com slash threatwire. With that, let's get started. First up, did the Patriot Act expire last night? I'm going to quote NPR here, quoting Senator Mitch McConnell sometime May 31st, that's Sunday as in yesterday. Quote, we shouldn't be disarming unilaterally as our enemies grow more sophisticated and aggressive, and we certainly should not be doing so based on a campaign of demagoguery and disinformation launched in the wake of unlawful actions of Edward Snowden. Meanwhile, on Sunday, Senator Rand Paul battled to make sure the USA Freedom Act would not get voted on before midnight, at which time key parts of the Patriot Act would expire. The ones used by the NSA to justify bulk metadata, uh, you might know it as massive phone records gathering, or the FBI, the stuff they use to gain Patriot Act wiretaps. In fact, the NSA told CNN it had officially shut down the bulk metadata collection program at 7.44 p.m. on Sunday, well in advance of the midnight deadline for the sunset of the Patriot Act powers. What does all this mean? Well, the USA Freedom Act will probably get passed later this week. It's a compromise between privacy advocates and color me biased, the folks that believe spying on all Americans all the time is the only way to keep America safe. As far as the bulk metadata stuff, the Freedom Act telephone record storage, well, it gets shoved to the phone companies instead of at the NSA. So the data will still be gathered, just stored off-site, which is pretty accessible if you're the NSA. Meanwhile, the Justice Department will still be able to gain wiretap orders for ongoing investigations under a grandfather clause in the Patriot Act. And that's just the tip of this iceberg. I'm greatly oversimplifying the battle in the Senate and skipping large parts of the USA Freedom Act. We'll look at it more later this week, especially if it passes. Gmail, Docs, Sheets, Hangouts, Calendars. Darren Shannon and I joke a lot about having given our lives over to Google, and we're only half kidding. If anybody ever cracks into my account, yes, I have two-factor authentication turned on, they can pretty much wreak havoc on my personal and professional life. Just make it a mess. So Google promised more security in Android M back at Google I.O. M's not here yet, of course, but this morning Google dropped two new websites to help you figure out what's going on with your life on Google. The big one, myaccount.google.com, makes it much easier to find the tools to change sign-in, device, ads, and other settings on Google, and they even created a security setup wizard to help with passwords and to verify your devices. Amazing how many devices I've logged into in the last year. My favorite find in there, though, comes from Engadget Steve Dent, who wrote, quote, did you know that Google can go ahead and feature your publicly shared Google Plus images as a background for its products and services? Well, now you do, and Mountain View lets you tick a box if you want them to cut that out. Meanwhile, privacy.google.com is a fact with answers to questions like, what data does Google collect? What does Google do with the data it collects? Does Google sell my personal information? What tools do I have to control my Google experience? How does Google keep my information safe? And what can I do to stay safe online? I will uh, be spending a lot of quality time on both sites over the next couple of days, mostly the My Account one, because there's a lot of stuff out there I didn't realize. I know Darren told you on Friday about Hala VPN and the possibility of using it as sort of a tool for doing nefarious things on the internet. Kind of a different spin on that this morning on CNET.com. Basically, a story from adios-hala.org, which is a security group that pretty much wants you to stop using Hala, you and the 47 million other people that apparently are using the VPN service to dodge geofencing on video content. In any case, adios-hala.org says, one, that they allow for you to be tracked across the internet no matter what you do. Two, they send traffic of strangers through your internet connection. Makes sense, it's peer-to-peer. -peer. Three, they sell access to third parties like Darren told you, and they don't care what it's used for and four, they'll let anybody execute programs on your computer. Now, in theory, that one's actually been fixed by HALA, but there's a workaround to get around the fix by HALA to allow people to remotely execute programs on your computer, which is something you never want people to do. So do yourself a favor. If you're a little concerned about HALA using their company called Luminati to sell access to your machine or the network your machine is on at 20 bucks a gigabyte to do who knows what with your ISP connection, do yourself a favor. Listen to the crew of security researchers behind adios-hala.org. They claim they don't work for competitors. They say they stand to make no financial gain. They just want you to stop using Hala right now. And given the number of VPN alternatives, it's probably worth considering. 
We usually think of red teams as the hackers employed to find weaknesses in computer networks and systems. The red team came in and said our VPN isn't secure. But Homeland Security red teams found that, quote, TSA agents failed 67 out of 70 tests with red team members repeatedly able to get potential weapons through checkpoints. Ouch. That report comes from an ABC News report citing, quote, officials briefed on the results of a recent Homeland Security Inspector General's report. How bad are we talking here? Look, we usually try to hold the, we don't like FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. But this quote really stood out. In one test, an undercover agent was stopped after setting off an alarm at a magnetometer, but TSA screeners failed to detect a fake explosive device that was taped to his back during a follow-on pat-down. So, TSA security, make your own call on that one. And in lighter news, the next chapter of Windows security, hey, Windows Edge browser, starts July 29th, the official release date of Windows 10. That's all for today. Our next episode hits Wednesday, June 3rd, and you can find all our episodes of ThreatWire, links to our social networks, and pretty much everything else you need to know to contribute over at ThreatWire.net. I hope you'll contribute to Patreon.com slash ThreatWire to help us keep this coming to you completely independent and ad-free. If you can't donate, a like, a share, and a subscribe go a long way, too. With that, I'm Patrick Norton, and I'll see you out on the Internet. Thank <laughs> you.